Hello everyone, how's it going? This is Immigration Attorney Mamita. I'm coming to you live to talk to you about immigration and to see what you may have on your mind tonight. Today I want to start off with a special topic, but before I go into this, if you have a question about immigration or you have a concern about your case, feel free to drop your comment or question in the box below and I will do my best to answer as many questions as I can live before I have to go. And if you have been looking to speak with me, please give our office a call. 212-248-7907. I work in New York. However, I work with clients all over the U.S. So do give us a call. Don't delay when you need help on your case, okay? So the question that I wanted to start out with this with is this. Are you in the middle of your marriage green card case? However, you have found out that your spouse is not filing for taxes or has failed to, come to file for taxes and Right now, you are seeing that they do not want to file their taxes. Do you feel that they're doing this in order to sabotage your immigration case? Because when you file for a marriage-based green card application, your U.S. citizen spouse must be current and up-to-date on their filings. So what can you do if you are trying through this process, you're married to a citizen, and you find out that they haven't filed their taxes, or they, uh, they keep giving these delays and these excuses about why they can't file? When they do this, this leaves you in a situation where you can't even proceed with your green card filing. Lawyers don't want to work with you because the taxes are not filed. So what are your options in this case? Well, here's the thing. If your spouse is refusing to file taxes when they know that you need it for your case, there may be other things going on as well where they are directly or indirectly trying to control your status trying to prevent you from getting better things, trying to prevent you from being secure, and they may be controlling you in other ways as well. This is where I would love for you to give us a call at 212-248-7907, because if this is your situation, if you are going through this where your spouse doesn't want to file or you have a request for evidence on your case and your spouse doesn't want to give you the documents or they give you the runaround saying that they can't do X, Y, and Z, when they fully well know that it will cause a denial in your case, please give us a call at 212-248-7907 to see if we can help you move forward on your own without having to rely on your spouse. Okay, it is a very powerful sort of case where you may be eligible to file for a green card and a work permit and a travel document all on your own without having to be on the edge worried about what your spouse is going to do. You won't have to be on the edge about missing a deadline and getting a denial. Okay, 212-248-7907. Now, this is a definitely something that people may come up with. Now, what happens also when you go for your marriage interview and you find out at the interview that your spouse has a criminal history that they failed to tell you about? What happens when you, you're in front of the immigration officer and you're being asked questions about each other and all of a sudden the officer asks you, well, do you know if your spouse has ever been arrested? And you say, no, he's never or she's never been arrested. And they turn to the spouse and your spouse miraculously starts talking about their entire arrest history that they never told to you. And you end up having a terrible interview and you end up uh, getting a denial. What are your options in this case? Well, my dear friends, I submit to you when you marry someone, you marry somebody to have a life together. And if your, your partner is not telling you important details about their criminal history, their financial history, uh, their previous marital history, if they've been married more than once. These are things that you deserve to know the truth about. And if your spouse has prevented you from finding this out and you only find it out after the fact, after you're already in this uh, complicated relationship, then you should give us a call at 212-248-7907 because these are unpleasant surprises and they're usually accompanied by other things that happen in the relationship that make your life very difficult and very unstable uh, in terms of securing your legal status. And we may be able to help you file for a green card uh, on your own without your spouse, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer some questions. Thank you to everyone who's been asking. Uh, I am live streaming on all platforms available, which is TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So thank you to everyone who's joining. Um, Golama is saying, I'm from Portugal. How can I work in the USA? Golama, you need to be qualified for a work visa, which is not something that I do, uh, nor do I do EB4s uh, or F1 cases. If my spouse signs a voluntary departure but comes back, does he still have the 10-year bar from Scarlett Reyes? If your spouse signs a voluntary departure and they leave, 
uh, they can come back as long as they come back with permission and they won't, they may not have to wait. Now, normally when, even when somebody has a voluntary departure, uh, when they leave, they may still uh, uh, incur uh, or trigger what is called a 10 year bar to, to re entering the US. But if they're married to a US citizen, then you can actually ask for forgiveness of this without having to wait the full 10 years. So Scarlett, your spouse can come back. Uh, he probably, he may have the 10 year bar uh, because the 10 year bar is something that people get at any time they've been unlawfully in the US for more than one year. Uh, we still would have to evaluate your spouse's case to see what else he may uh, have to do. But do give us a call, 212-248-7907, okay? And we can still help your spouse come back to the US. If your spouse or your family member has been deported or they sign a voluntary departure and now they wanna come back to the US. So yes, it is true that many times they may have a 10-year bar, but where somebody who has left the US has a US citizen or green card holding spouse uh, or parent, then they may be eligible to apply for what is called the I-601 waiver that shortens that 10 year period down to a lot less, okay? Um, <laughs> King, King's Alvi saying, Te pareces a Lea Rimini from the King of Queens TV show. Gracias. Ella es muy uh, bonita. Um, uh, hello, what question should I prepare for next month as my marriage green card interview from uh, Guli Safid, Julie Safid? Uh, anyone who has an upcoming immigration interview for marriage, please check out my YouTube page. I have amazing videos. I have lots of well-planned videos regarding marriage in, in interviews. And I've gone to hundreds of interviews over the course of my career. And the best way to prepare is number one, always make sure you go over your application. Number two, make sure you have all of your documents prepared. You need to have originals of all of your identification documents, as well as as much marriage evidence as possible. Go over your how we met story so you know who, what, when, where, why about how you met, how their relationship evolved, how you ended up married, basically, because you have to help the officer understand how your relationship happened. And number three, make sure you know the important details about each other. Um, if, can you please shed some light on E2 visa? I don't do those, so I cannot, I'm sorry. Um, if I wanted to become an immigration lawyer, what steps should I take? Uh, definitely go to law school and then try to work for an immigration lawyer if you can. Um, how can my parents obtain citizenship from applesauce and kiwi? If your parents are looking to get citizenship, there is a very important factor that we have to look at first. Number one, we have to see how your uh, mother or your father entered the U.S. If you're in a, an adult U.S. citizen, which means that you're a U.S. citizen who was above the age 21 and your, uh, your parents entered the country uh, with a visa or with permission, then you may be eligible to apply for them right away for their residency. And then we can do their citizenship. But if your parents did not have a legal entry, then we have to look to see if you or one of your family member or your, your siblings is in the military. So we can do military parole in place for your parents. Or we would look to see if your parents are eligible for Section 245I adjustment of status. Or we'd look to see if your parents are eligible for parent VAWA, which is where uh, there is a U.S. citizen child of theirs who has subjected them to extreme cruelty. So when you have siblings, when you know that, you know, you, you're one of your siblings has been in, in and out of jail, giving your parents a hard time, constantly talking back or cursing out your parents, then do give us a call because there's lots of cases out there that we've done for people for our hardworking moms and dads who have been in the country for 20, 30 years uh, and done everything right. But sometimes there are some, some children who, who give problems and this is where we come in to help. Um, all right. Um, I-485 pending since September 2021 in a VAWA case, what should I do from Isabel Prudencini? Isabel, this is not a problem. It's actually normal and you should expect your I-485 to take uh, at least a year if your VAWA has been approved already, uh, anywhere from six months to, uh, to a year, depending on where you are. So depends on your jurisdiction. If, you're, if you think it's outside of the processing time, Isabel, you can contact USCIS customer service. Uh, or write a letter uh, to the VAWA Service Center. Um, Congress said my case is still pending. Review assignment for officer review for VAWA. Can you let me know what this means, please? Um, from SK. SK, I'm not sure what this means. I haven't seen this. Uh, I would be curious to know a little bit more if you're able to provide some more details. 
Uh, Anasco, thank you for saying I'm the best attorney in the U.S. Thank you so much. Um, hello, ma'am. Will you take my case? It's related to Section 245A6CI. Uh, uh, I'm Harry. Uh, I only take certain sort of cases, so you'd have to call our office to see if you're uh, if you have the sort of case that we can work with. But thank you for that. Um, good evening. I got a prima facie also in removal proceedings, but I just applied for discretionary dismissal to ICE. Is that a great move from Sheikh bin Talib? Sheikh, yes. If you have filed for VAWA, but you're in court, you are in removal proceedings, and you have uh, applied for prosecutorial discretion to, to dismiss the case, that's a good move because now it's going to free you up to allow you to go for the green card. Nobody wants to be in deportation. So if you have a prima facie determination from VAWA, that means you have an alternate relief outside of court. So you don't need a judge to hear about asylum or anything like that. So Sheikh, good luck to you, okay? And if you need assistance, give us a call. What is the consequence if my VAWA case gets denied? Can I appeal? How long usually does a VAWA case take to be approved from Tiago? Tiago, uh, first of all, I hope your VAWA case gets approved. If you're working with us, uh, I'd love to see uh, how, how we can help. If your VAWA case is denied, there are pretty much very few consequences, none that I know of. Uh, you know, usually if somebody has a, a very a bad criminal history uh, with felonies and things like that, which I would probably have to consider very closely before filing for VAWA, then they may be uh, at risk of removal. But most people don't have that when they're applying for VAWA. Uh, and simply, if you get denied, usually the case is not even referred to, to court. So usually nothing happens to you if it gets denied. And yes, if your VAWA case gets denied, there is a process for appeal so you could appeal it further. And I would definitely recommend doing that when your case should have been approved, okay? Um, and normally VAWAs are taking about two years um, to be approved on their own. Um, I have my interview tomorrow from Sullivan Lucian. Good luck to you. All right. My current visa is about to expire this June 30th. How long does the I-765 C9 through VAWA take? Um, so uh, Harvey, usually when you're applying for a work permit through VAWA or a work permit to adjustment to status, these days the work permit is taking about eight to 10 months to get. So yes, it will take a long time. And if you just applied recently, then you're not gonna get it before June 30th most likely, but you can request an expedite if you meet the qualifications. If your VAWA is denied, can you appeal even if your two-year marriage bar has passed from Lena? Lena, yes, you don't need to apply. You don't need to stay married to appeal your VAWA if it's denied, as long as your, your VAWA appeal is timely. But if you want to uh, uh, file for a new VAWA altogether, then yes, that may be too late to file, but you should appeal your case if it gets denied and you believe you should have won, okay? Um... I applied for VAWA and I put the wrong address and this address did not exist. C CIS sent an RFB. I did not answer because the letter returned to USCIS. Can my case be denied from uh, FRC? If you get a request for evidence from immigration and you don't reply, then usually, yes, your case will probably get denied because that's just how they work. They send you a request for evidence. You have to give it by a deadline. And if you don't give it, then they will close it and you'll get a denial. Now, if you can prove that you uh, they sent it to the wrong address and you never received it, then you may be able to try to reopen your case uh, at that way or simply just file a second time. Um, Gerardo is saying, um, any information uh, on the grandparent clause uh, gracias por toda la información. Uh, Gerardo, uh, uh, gracias a, a, a usted por, por su pregunta. No tengo uh, más información ahora. Um, I don't have any information about this right now, but as soon as I do, then I will be sure to make sure I, uh, I send it. Um, Rafiuddin, uh, welcome, salam. How long is it taking to get the work permit and parole from Hello Bonetti? Hello Bonetti, uh, work permit and, and advanced parole will take between eight to 10 months, depending on the category of case that you file for. Because in immigration, you can apply for a work permit under like 30 different categories. There's 30 different categories of eligibility for a work permit. So depending on what your category is, that's what will determine how long it takes for your work permit and advanced parole to be processed. Generally, the majority of people are applying for a work permit and advanced parole based upon an adjustment of status application, which is a green card application. Um, and these are taking uh, an average of eight to 10 months these days. 
Is it normal to do biometrics prior prior to receiving prima facie? It's been five months and how long does it take nowadays anyway from Elvis? Elvis, I can't really tell you how long anything is taking these days. The timelines are up and down. But yes, it's normal to do biometrics before prima facie. Um, please, my question is if I filed for valid by myself since July 2021 and no prima facie yet, should I be worried? And just one RFP for good moral um, conduct from Mitchell. Mitchell, uh, thank you for the question. If you have filed for valid by yourself uh, in 2021 and you still have not received your prima facie determination, you don't need to be worried, but I will contact the, the Vermont Service Center to see if they can issue you a prima facie determination. You should have it, although a prima facie determination in a valid case is not an approval. For me, it is a sign. It is a good sign to have to know that your application is in the right place. Um, and if you have already uh, responded to the RFE for good moral uh, character and, and you still haven't gotten your prima facie, then you should definitely contact them. And Vermont Service Center is generally pretty good about responding about this, okay? Um, and Steve Clark is talking about exactly this. Is, is a prima facie a good sign in a valid case? And how long do you think I might take to get my advanced parole? Prima facie is an excellent sign in any valid case. Uh, I... Uh, I strive for it in all of my cases. Your advanced parole will probably take about 10 months. Um, I filed an I-360. Um, I got a prima facie for a year. Now it expires and I got a six-month extension. Um, that's good. You should definitely go ahead and keep renewing it. When having an interview, how long does it take for them to send a green card from Jay Reyes? Uh, Jay Reyes, after your interview, your, your green card will approximately take about uh, up to 30 days to, to receive. But if there's any, any issue in your case where the officer who interviewed you needs to review it further or to investigate certain, certain things or give you um, an RFE or they want to ask you to come back for a second interview, it will take a lot longer than a month. Uh, I would expect several months for that. Can a person work with their ITIN without getting in trouble? Well, sir, I can't answer that question about whether you can you, you can work. Legally, you're not, if you don't have authorization, you're not supposed to work, so I can't say that you can. Um, but people file taxes with ITINs without problems. How much is it to make an appointment with you from uh, Jaime Ramos? Jaime, uh, it is 150 for an appointment. Um, and I uh, help people all over the country, so no matter where you live, uh, you can give us a call. Applicants has died. What is ha what happens to the derivative of an I-751 case that was pending before the court from GT Can? GT Can, um, in this case, uh, if if you have a green card already uh, and it's an I-751 case uh, and it's pending and your spouse dies, if you have so so here's a scenario, guys. What happens if you have a two-year green card? Uh, you file the removal of conditions, probably gets denied, or you end up in court. Uh, and your I-751 spouse, the U.S. citizen, dies, well, you'd be eligible for a waiver, for a waiver based upon uh, termination of the marriage by death. So that's what you would ask for. And if you're in court, now is a good time to ask for prosecutorial discretion. If I left two times illegally, can I still apply for citizenship from Ileana? Uh, so that will depend, Ileana, first of all, on, on when the times were that you left and you came back illegally and whether you have certain bars and what cases you qualify for, because before you apply for citizenship, we have to get your green card and we have to see what's possible with that. So give us a call, Ileana, 212-248-7907. I received my prima facie determination. Do I need an SSN to apply for public benefits um, from It Was Jesus, bro? Uh, it Was Jesus, uh, you have to check with your state. Um, my husband got denied an interview due to attorney from Tina Murillo. Tina, I'm so sorry to hear that. I, I, I would be curious to know what happened. Um, thank you to anyone who's sharing my videos and, uh, and my live video right now. Can my mom, who's a U.S. citizen, file for my adult brother who's married but separated from uh, Mali Cookies? When you are a U.S. citizen and you have adult, you, adult children who are, uh, who are above 21, whether they're married or not married or separated or divorced, if you're applying for them, you can expect that the wait time for your adult child is going to take more than 10 years. Moreover, if your child is in the U.S. and you're a U.S. citizen, of course, you love your kids, so you want to help them get their green card. If they're in the U.S. and their status is expired, but you're a U.S. citizen, they will not be eligible to uh, do the green card process inside the U.S. when their priority date becomes current. 
Instead, they'll have to leave the U.S. Uh, they'll have to ask for a waiver for unlawful presence before. So Mali cookies, your mother can apply for your brother, but it's not an easy fix. It is not a quick fix. It's a long process. Um, I had my green card interview two months ago and they lost my green, my medical exam. <laughs> they didn't approve your green card because of that. Um, I would definitely try to reopen that case uh, and see why they lost it. They shouldn't be denying it. They should be sending you a request for a new medical exam at that point. Okay. Um, my interview was done for asylum in January. My decision is still pending. How long to wait for my decision from Gaudi? Um, Gaudi, I would say these days during the COVID time, uh, post-COVID time, after an asylum interview, it's it's normal to wait like up to six months for, for, for a decision. That's how long we've waited for several of our decisions. So good luck to you. I hope you get approved, okay? Um... I have a notice of intent to deny indicating I have married in my home country, but I respond to them with my divorce. I have a combo card, which expires next year. Is it safe to travel outside the U.S. from Dan Sala? Dan Sala, I would say no, it's not safe for you to travel outside the U.S. because if you have a pending immigration case based upon your marriage to a citizen and they've challenged your eligibility, they give you a notice of intent to deny and you're still waiting for a decision, well, when you travel out of the U.S., you can magically get denied by immigration <laughs> on your case. And the minute you get denied, you will have an immense problem in being able to return to the U.S. because the first thing that Customs and Border Patrol will do when you try to show your card, uh, your advanced parole card to, to come in through the airport, they check to see is your case still pending. And the minute they see that it's denied, you're going to be stuck. So I don't advise, I, I, I would recommend you to wait um, until you get a decision. Um, how long before one can file for citizenship after getting a 10 year green card, if you file a VAWA, but you're married, but you're still married to your spouse for four years from Tandika. Um, when you get approved for a green, your green card through VAWA, you can apply for citizenship after three years. Um, I don't care if you're still married to your spouse. Uh, as I've said before on my, on my videos, marriage is extremely complicated and anyone who deals with these sort of cases knows that not everyone elects to, to actually separate or divorce, but they still may be eligible for VAWA. So if you are scared, Tandika, to apply for citizenship because you're still married to your spouse, please give us a call, 212-248-7907. You deserve to be a U.S. citizen, um, and uh, I, you don't have to, to, to fear, fear this, okay? And they're not allowed to ask you about the VAWA case, uh, although they may ask you if you're still married. And if they ask, there's simple ways to explain what is going on. Um, I applied for VAWA. How long will it take? I applied last October. So VAWA cases are taking approximately two years. My husband is a green card holder. Can he petition for me and my kids? Um, my kids are in Jamaica, but I'm in the U.S. My boy is 17 and 13 from Leonora. Leonora, um, you're, uh, if you're in the U.S. and you're within status, uh, then you can, uh, then your husband can apply for you. If you're not, if you're out of status, then you're, you have to wait for your spouse to become a citizen and you 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 can uh, bring your kids as a derivative, but if your spouse becomes a citizen, they need to file their own I-130 for the kids. Uh, how, how do I petition for my partner who's in Mexico from Kevin? Kevin, for your partner in Mexico, uh, the first question is, are you married or not? If you're married, then you the process is to apply for an I-130 and then to do consular processing. Your spouse will have to go for, or your partner will have to go for an interview uh, at Ciudad Juarez. If you're not married, I would also recommend looking at the fiancé visa for, for Mexico because it's actually a little bit faster. Uh, you can get an interview in Mexico City a little bit more quickly. Uh, so give us a call at 212-248-7907. Um, what is the process of the U visa from Darshik? Darshik, the U visa is a process, is a way to get a, a, a visa and then a pathway to a green card and citizenship if you have been the victim of a crime. You first have to apply for the U visa uh, and then get approved. And then after three years, you can apply for a green card. Um, what's next after the 10 year ban? My wife is the petitioner of the U S citizen from Janie Mona. Janie, um, if you have the 10 year bar uh, and you're married to a U S citizen, then we have to see what cases you qualify for, because 
With the 10 year bar, it depends on is it just a regular 10 year bar or a permanent 10 year bar? There's two different types of bars that are 10 years long. So we have to evaluate your case. Uh, please give us a call. I would love to see how we can help. Okay. 212 248 7907. If I petition for my mom in one state, do we need to stay living in the same state until it's done for Miriam? Miriam, if you're petitioning for a parent, you don't need to live together at all. Although if you're called for an interview, you'd have to appear. Can I petition for my mother and my husband at the same time from Jasmine? Yes, you can. There's no restriction on this. Okay. Can I apply for removal of conditions? Uh, I'm married and I had a green card for three years and I'm separated for the past two months from um, Om Air, TikTok. If you have a two-year green card uh, that you got through marriage, but you're separated from your spouse, I do want you to give me a call, 212-248-7907, because this is the sort of case that I work with a lot for people who have uh, just are living in fear and have lost hope about what the possibilities are. People who get a two-year green card sometimes suffer for years uh, or they let their card expire because they've been separated and divorced. There are many waivers available when the marriage does not work out, whether it ends in divorce or you separated due to um, what you suffered during the marriage. The suffering can be emotional, physical, financial, sexual. There's a lot of different ways that your spouse can cause uh, cause you to, to, to lose sleep and to uh, to fear for your status, okay? So give us a call, um, 212-248-7907. Um, hmm. my mom's case is still pending for her green card renewal. And my dad passed away about two years ago from Kenzie. Kenzie, I'm so sorry to hear that. So, um, I don't feel like your dad passing away should impact your mom's case. Uh, but if you're worried about something, do give us a call to see if we can possibly give you an appointment. Um, all right. How long does it take to get a permanent green card after two years of temporary green card in the U.S. from Sandeep? Sandeep, uh, the two, when you apply for the removal of conditions, this application by itself will take about uh, almost two years to process, which is why, guys, they give you a two-year extension um, and you can apply for citizenship uh, after accruing three years of residency, although I always recommend that you wait for your uh, application for the I-751 to be approved first. If you have received a notification that you got an RFE, but you haven't gotten it yet in the mail, call USCIS to request a copy and make them aware. Um, I received a letter stating an I-693 deficiency. Is that bad from Blanca? Blanca, it is not bad at all. It's actually a great sign. It means that uh, that your your application uh, is basically uh, good administratively and it's just going to be waiting for an interview. When you get this letter, when you get this letter uh, that says I-690 deficiency, courtesy notice, that's exactly what it is. It's a courtesy notice letting you know that you uh, your case is missing the I-693 medical exam, uh, the immigration medical exam, and it tells you in the letter that you have to either wait to uh, to send the medical exam if they request it by mail through the request for evidence process, or if you get an interview, it's just a reminder that you need to bring it with you to the interview. So when you receive it in the mail, don't freak out. Don't freak out, guys. Uh, it's going to be okay. It's a good sign. It means that there's nothing else missing in your case. Um, My U.S. citizen father applied for my I-130. When I get my green card processing, I'm from San Antonio, from Rincey. Rincey, this depends on many different factors. What are the chances of getting a two-year green card removed based on abuse after divorce has taken place from Fashion Portrait? Fashion Portrait. The chances of getting your conditions removed uh, on your two-year residency to get the 10-year permanent residency card uh, when you've suffered abuse uh, is extremely high when you are working with the right lawyer. This is something that I deal with on a regular basis. Your story has to be told in a particular way, uh, and you have to be prepared very well for the interview on your case, which is what I do for all of my clients. And I sit with my clients at these interviews by their side. So Fashion Portrait, if you've gone through this, give us a call right now, 212-248-7907 uh, to make an appointment, okay? All right, everyone, that's all the time that I have for today. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I will see you guys again uh, soon. 
And if you're waiting to make an appointment with me, don't delay any longer. My thoughts fill up pretty fast and I hope to hear from you soon. Uh, give us a call at 212-248-7907.